Hey indie game fans! The portmanteau term Metroidvania refers to games which draw inspiration from the classic gaming series of Metroid and Castlevania, with an interconnected world, new abilities that allow you to access new areas, challenging boss fights, and in the most classic sense, are 2D action platformers. These encourage and reward exploration with a ton of secrets and is my personal favourite genre, so here are the top 10 best Metroidvania indie games on the Nintendo Switch. The Momodora series of games dates back to 2010 and Reverie Under the Moonlight is the latest entry, first released in 2016. The series has you playing as various priestesses, wielding magical maple leaves, seeking to cleanse the lands of evil forces, where this game serves as the prequel to the other three, and as such, it's a good place to jump in, even though no prior knowledge of the story is needed. Made by Brazilian indie developer Bomb Service, this gives me just a little bit of that Toho influence, with the priestesses being analogs to shrine maidens, but what I really like about this game is the world building and atmosphere. There are hints of a world rich in lore, in the same way that Dark Souls does it, but the pixel art and the minute to minute action is fantastic. Alright, so Hollow Knight appears at number 9 on this list, not because it's not good, but simply because it is the most obvious pick. One of my all-time favourite Metroidvania games, this has won many Game of the Year awards and for good reason, since it is excellent. Descend into the ruined kingdom of Hello Nest, where all characters are some variant of bugs, and the hand-drawn art and challenging combat are the main draws. The boss encounters are some of the most challenging ones that I have come across, and certain areas of the game simply exude pure terror and tension. You have upgrades like the dash, the double jump and the ground pound, so all pretty standard, but it really got its hook deep into me. One fantastic aspect is that the developer, Team Cherry, continued to put out free content DLC for the game, which is so nice of them, so play this while you wait for the sequel, Hollow Knight Silk Song. Guacamelee was one of the modern metroidvanias that really got me into the genre, since the Mexican and Lucha Libre inspired title is excellent. A very traditional princess saving story sets up the narrative, but the melee focus and wrestling moves are what really seals the deal. Juan can punch, kick, body slam, uppercut and power driver enemies with a pretty neat dimension switching mechanic where you can adventure in both the land of the living and the dead. The platforming challenges are some of the most fun that I have had in such games and while the sequel Guacamelee 2 does exist, the enhanced original and Super Turbo Championship Edition still holds up and has a special place in my heart. Super Turbo Championship Edition! The joy of discovery is one aspect that I love in Metroidvania games, and one which has that in speeds is Wapo. This is a world filled with strange creatures, from worms and fanatics, that has you travelling from Popo City to Blicopolis in this whimsical adventure. Of 
after being kicked out of your home, travel the world to find a new place to live while helping all sorts of weird and adorable NPCs along the way. There are boss fights and hidden secrets and lore, but as a whole, this is a very pleasant and wonderful experience and is one of the more overlooked games in the genre. From cute and cuddly to grotesque body horror, Axiom Verge falls more on the Metroid side of things with the sci-fi atmosphere and hides some secrets that are best left for you to explore. On the surface, this looks very much like your average Metroidvania with fantastic core action and a nice variety of weapons, challenging enemies and bosses, and that all-important interconnected map. Things quickly take a turn for it's strange on this alien world, which I won't spoil, but definitely worth a play. Image and Form's premiere series is a Steamroll Dig franchise in my opinion, although perhaps I feel that way since this is the genre that I love the most. Improving on every aspect from the first game released in 2013, Steamroll Dig 2 has you playing as Dorothy on a quest to look for her missing friend Rusty. The core of the gameplay here, if it's not obvious enough from the title, is digging and mining. Delve into the earth to mine for minerals, return to town and sell them and purchase upgrades that enable you to dig even more efficiently. There are boss fights, hazards and traps, and even tricky platforming sections with the jetpack and grappling hook upgrades being especially useful, all held together with a wonderfully cohesive Wild West steampunk world and aesthetics. The Messenger is an action platformer that has you taking on the role of the so-called Messenger having to travel and fight through the land in order to deliver a scroll that is essential for the survival of his clan. What is particularly interesting is the platforming sections themselves, since attacking enemies or lanterns while in mid-air allows you to immediately jump again, which combined with your Metroidvania upgrades of gliding during a jump and even a grappling hook makes for quite the fluid experience. There are a ton of collectibles and an interesting dimension shifting mechanic which switches from 8 to 16 bits as well as excellent humorous writing which leads to a very cleverly written story and of course is an experience that I highly recommend. The Monster Boy or Wonder Boy franchise dates all the way back to the 1980s but recently saw a revival of sorts with both Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom as well as Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap. This is a wonderfully animated, cartoony metroidvania that features different animal forms as upgrades from a pig that can sniff out secrets to a dragon that can fly. The discovery and exploration portion is also wonderful in this since you have equipment and weapons as well such as the heavy boots that causes you to sink allowing you to explore underwater areas. As expected, backtracking to earlier areas with these new upgrades later in the game will net you some sweet rewards. The main draw for me is the art style which is so colourful and beautiful with as mentioned, the very satisfying exploration and discovery. Hello, 
Yoku's Island Express made my top 10 indie games of the year less than 2018, so it's no surprise that it shows up here as well. Meet an unforgettable cast. A self styled Pinballvania play as the dung beetle postman Yoku as he takes on his new job on Mokumana Island where something is not quite right. Save the island from a terrible fate. Integrating pinball tables seamlessly into an open world Metroidvania type map is very clever, and there are also ability unlocks that, in Metroidvania style, allows you to access new areas as well. There are even boss fights, side objectives and secrets, and as a shining example of why I love indie games so much due to how unique a concept this is. Really love it so much, so please pick this one up. They came for my home. In lieu of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night being optimized for Switch, my other recommendation for a very unashamedly Castlevania Symphony of the Night type experience is Time Spinner. The long in development title released last year spots a wonderful 16-bit SNES look with beautiful pixel art, especially in the character portraits, as well as the RPG and leveling system that is present in the more Castlevania-leaning games. Playing as a timekeeper seeking revenge on an empire that killed her family, harness the power of the time spinner and use this to your advantage. The most interesting ability is to freeze time allowing you to use enemies as platforms to access new areas, and the sheer variety of the different areas and the weird mix of sci-fi, fantasy, and steampunk does end up giving the game quite a unique feel. There are different orbs that you can equip, which will change your default attack, and even the presence of familiars which you can train and level up, which is a concept that I love in such games. While not straying too far from its inspiration, this gets full marks for being an excellent tribute, what with does have a story of its own to tell. For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.